Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where it's about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Flash. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, Barry realizes that Iris is missing and searches everywhere that he can to try and find her, but realizing, like, right, she must be stuck in a still force again. And so it's like, right, so how do you get into the Steel Force without Dion? Because he's still MIA. And so Barry thinks about going to Tenya. Tenya, using her powers in conjunction with Iris's circumstances, allowed her to punch through and end up in the Steel Force. And I guess maybe he thought with the combination of his powers as a speedster as well as Tenya's abilities that that would help. But the moment Tenya's like, wait, you're, uh, oh, you're Iris's husband. And it's like, right. Uh, it's kind of interesting because, like, there's a parallel you can make to, like, Wes from The Walking Dead, uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. Slight spoilers if you're not caught up with Fear of the Walking Dead. But Wes is kind of given up on, like, I was like, oh, you guys made me believe that people are better than what they are. You show me, like, oh, things could be better, but I'm like, now I see it's all for BS. Tina's basically the same way. She was like, I was fine, not, like, even though she wasn't, because she was still looking for her mom, it's just Iris and then help, but Iris made her feel like, oh, there's hope, that things are going to be okay, and it's like, now that hope was taken away, and that's why she's like, good, now your hope is taken away, because you can't find your wife, leave me alone. Which is so sad, but to be fair, I think Tinya was grown, she had grown up, like, so angry and bitter, and that, you know, she was still longing for her mom, and just when she had her mom in her life again, where things, oh, things could be good, I, uh, you know, and that was kind of taken from her by Iris, wasn't on purpose, she was sick, but Tanya didn't bother trying to let her explain, and it's like, right, we can find a solution to this or something, she didn't want to, she didn't want to give her a chance, ended up doing that, so... Now she won't even help Barry, and I guess Barry's not in a position to try and, like, force her to help. I was wondering if he, like, try and persuade her by, like, forcing... Because she doesn't know who the Flash is. She doesn't care. Like, that's... And if he probably forced the issue, she probably disappear, and he won't be able to find her, so... But that's when Dion shows up, and it turns out that it's not just him that's sick. It turns out the other forces are sick as well, because this illness, which is interesting that it... Because we still don't know where the time sickness originated. You know, how Iris contracted it. Now how a literal god uh, got it, the Steel Force. And then also, uh, potentially, the other forces as well. That's why they haven't been able to get in contact with them. But Barry's kind of going all in. Uh, rebuilding the device that's going to help them track Iris. He's going to go into Steel Force with Dion. Which, Joe's kind of reluctant. Like, whoa, whoa, should we really be doing that? But for Barry, it's like... Uh, Dion's basically my kid, so I trust him. He's helped us out in the past. Uh, he helped out Iris with her illness, so of course I'm going to trust him. As we find out pretty, well, not pretty quickly, but later on, that's not the wise decision. But we've gotten a peek into the Steel Force before uh, with Iris. I want to say that was last season. Um, yeah, last season. Is one last time we uh, really got a look at it, and we only got that park area, which is kind of the entrance and exit, one way in and one way out. But now you get to kind of experience the Steel Force as a whole, where basically the past, present, and future are all happening at a single time, all happening simultaneously. It's almost like this nexus of time, except because things are off, because the virus, the time sickness is spreading, the Steel Force is now like jumbled. So, like, time is happening all at once, but it's not happening in the correct sequence that it should. Things are happening out of order. Even later on, Barry and him, Barry and Dion find a sequence that has um, Allegra arguing about something. Like, you can't, like, she was saying, like, right, this is my story. I wonder, was it, like, was What's-Her-Face going to blast Allegra for who she really is as a part member of Team Flash or something like that. I wonder, was it some correlation there? It's like, whatever it is, we know that that's going to turn into something in the future. I'm curious if it's going to have some... It might have something to do with Chester's circumstances, in all honesty. Because the we got... We got... Have no idea. I was almost hoping that... Because she had, like, a laptop or maybe, like, a notebook or something. And it was kind of open at one point. And I thought it'd be interesting if Barry looked into it and saw it, but... He couldn't, he, we didn't get that look at, but I was wondering what that was going to be. That was fascinating too, because we got, there was an article that says like, uh, the trickster attacks Tibet. Uh, there was a particular name that was there. What was it? Um, 
it was something Davis, I believe, and I was like, that seems like that's probably a significant name. Once again, a comic book person is like, oh my god, it's that, most likely. But you never know, it might be one of those things like a, I'd assume it's like a DC thing, but it could always be like a Mark Guggenheim thing. How like, you know, because I was like, oh, what's that a reference to? It's like, oh yeah, because he's like one of the like producers or executive producers of this stuff. But yeah, it might be that type of thing, but I feel like it's probably more like a DC thing. Um... But I do like how, like I said, the Steel Force is. Like, you see things, like, kind of going forward and you're rewinding because time's completely out of whack. Cause I guess there's kind of, like, this equilibrium of past, present, and future all happening. I think everything happens in its own sequence there. But because it is the way it is, like, oh, the past is now turning in. Well, the future is now turning into the past and just kind of going back and forth. So, like, oh, those birds are flying forward. Like, oh, this is the present. But then, like, they rewind like they're in the past. So, like, for example, Barry ends up picking up the article it talks about oh the particle accelerator and then the next one is zoom and godspeed destroy the city it's like right those were years and seasons apart season two versus season six slash seven because there was a whole bunch of godspeeds in season six that now it's like they return to season seven but regardless i thought that was pretty interesting uh display of that but um, I immediately knew something was up with Dion when Barry's like, oh, we got to help Tinya's mom. He's like, no, we got to find Iris' mom. The fact is, you're kind of like, we should be helping her too. But he's like, no, Iris is the goal. I'm like, the fact is, he was so aggro about it. I was like, that seems weird. And so when they do track down where Iris is, or at least the thing that was inside of her that allowed them to track her, Dion absorbs it and then bounces. And you're like, what the hell was that about? So... My current theory, the, the time virus manifested itself. That's the time virus being active. Either it's it disguised itself as Dion when in actuality it has like the power of all the other forces as well. Or, I, I still think that's the time sickness. Uh, or maybe it like possesses his body and just maybe it's kind of almost like a, a parasite kind of latching on. But my other theory was, could this be a nega force type of situation whereas barry uses the speed force eobard used the negative force so could it be a situation that every one of the forces now has like a negative counterpart and maybe the 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 time sickness created a negative variation of each one so maybe this is a negative steel force um so it's uh his evil doppelganger like maybe that's what we're going because later on Dion pops up in 2049 I was like Nora you've got to help Barry and he didn't manifest himself it just seemed like he was struggling so it makes you wonder every time we've seen Dion this episode or how many times whenever we've seen Dion and probably the last time Dion disappeared that was probably the like outside of this episode the last time we saw him in the show and then he disappeared was probably the real Dion, and every D every time Dion popped her this episode, it wasn't the real Dion. It was the one that trapped Barry. Uh, but luckily, the I think the real Dion was able to reach Nora and brought her into the uh, Steel Force with Barry. He had kind of lost a little hope because he's feeling a little like obviously he's stuck in this situation and doesn't know a way out. Um. But I, I like what Nora has said, and I think it was very impactful of you kind of got to have to believe in yourself, you know, even when like if if anyone and everyone doubts you, you kind of got to believe in yourself. And that's something obviously she's adopted from her parents, because it turns out this Nora is a journalist like uh, a reporter like Iris, whereas the other uh, Nora ended up being a uh, crime scene analysis uh, like uh, Barry. Which also, I think that kind of makes sense in that regard because, well, that, um, because it may, maybe the argument is like Nora follows more in her mom's footsteps in this timeline because her and Iris are in a good, have a good relationship. In, um, the other timeline, season five, they didn't have a good relationship. And plus, Barry was missing too. So she followed in her father's footsteps to kind of be closer to him. But it seems like, obviously, like her and probably like, I think she's pretty tight with her dad, but I, I think that's kind of implying maybe she's even closer to her Iris in this particular timeline. So, which I think is sweet considering kind of the bad blood that was, and I think the misunderstandings and uh, misinterpretations uh, on Nora's part back in season five, I think kind of contributed to that. But nevertheless, just like her dad, it's like, right. I, she's like kind of stumbling at the beginning. She's like, I don't know how to like find my voice as a reporter. And so... 
she's because her mom makes it seem so easy, but she wants to keep you know believing in herself and that she'll find it and telling Barry to do the same thing. So Barry uh, does a thing that Wally uh, taught him about, you know, meditating, which apparently he d teaches uh, Bart uh, that as well and allows him to create, like, lightning constructs and stuff. So using the brush as a focus, which is pretty interesting to see that. So that's what – because I was curious, like – when things, because Iris was losing time, so that's why I was wondering, like, oh, did the, I guess the argument could be, like, the brush did kind of, well, it, it got trapped in the steel force is what it is. But I guess that's maybe every time Iris blacked out, she was getting stuck in the steel force and then, like, because because all of time exists, their past, present, and future all at once. So she probably, like, slips into the steel force and then got spat out at that point, like, oh, a little bit into the future so. Maybe that's the correlation there. But the brush ended up getting stuck there. Because that's one of those little dead zones or whatever that Dion had warned Barry about. About like, right, you get there, you're kind of stuck there in this loop and there's no getting out. So, But tapping into a little bit of the speed force, Barry's able to see so much. Everyone, he's like, oh, I can see Cisco, I can see Frost. Um... He's like, I could see so much past, present, and future. Uh, could see Nora marrying, and she's like, oh, I'm like, who's the lucky lady I'm here? She's like, you know what? Never mind. I don't want to know. Um, but using the steel force, they're able to push their way through and make their way to the exit. But in that moment, and I thought that was kind of an interesting like time loop situation is that they've already escaped, but the steel force to stop them from escaping, even though they already have, it's trapping them in a loop of the past of them not getting out. So, but it's like, right, Nora, I guess maybe because of what Nora's powers are as excess, it's like, right, focus on the future. Think of like, use the steel force and, well, because I guess at that point, Barry had already kind of burned through most of it. So he needs Nora to use the spark that's in her to focus on the future. Focus on the time, like the future where we've already escaped. Focus on that and it'll allow us to break this loop we're trapped in because of the steel force. So luckily they're able to escape, but it burned through every bit of the steel force left in them. So leaving them little to no options. Uh, but Barry can feel Iris because of the steel force. He can feel her presence. So he knows she's in there somewhere. And we also know Tinya's mom in there. Well, obviously, she's buried a little deeper. So maybe Barry can eventually get Tinya on their side because she might be a key factor in this. Or maybe it's going to be rescuing her mom eventually. Ship. I think it's finding out, like, right, I can help you get to your mom. And we'll, we'll see whether Tinya will be on board with that. I don't think she will because she's, she's under, the in the, under the impression like her mom's dead and gone. But it's like, no, your mom's still alive. We have to work together to help her. But we'll see whether Tinya will really sign off on that or not. Some other elements in the episode, uh, Chester is working with Kramer on this, like, device that went off at, a uh, halfway home, and people could have gotten hurt, but luckily no one was in the building at the time, and the moment Chester starts anal analyzing it, and he kind of goes, holy crap, I was like, it's the Allegra, the storyline from a little while back where Allegra was saying, like, oh, you might not want to put your um, ideas out there because people could do whatever they want to with them. And it comes full circle right here because Chester realizes he's calling himself a supervillain. And she's like, right, where's your meta uh, killing dagger and your purple headband? Which I was like, that's got to be a reference to some very specific character. Because when I think the meta human killing dagger, I'm like, well, Cicada, but like, who's the purple headband? I'm like... I don't know who that is. I was like, could that be the thinker? But I was like, I don't think so. Could it be? Because she had been combining two villains. I mean, those, and it would be interesting if she combined those two villains considering they're the back-to-back -back villains. To be fair, they're also the two of the three non-speedster villains. You know, Eobard, Reverse Flash, Zoom, and Savitar. So... It'd be interesting, but once again, they're also like back-to-back -back villains, season four and five, but I don't know if that's what she was referencing or not. The metahuman killing dagger, I immediately thought of like Cicada, but the purple headband, like I said, I wasn't quite sure. It's probably pretty obvious, like if so, because someone's probably going to let me know in the comments, and I'll be like, oh god, I feel so stupid for not realizing that, but regardless. I am glad in the end, it didn't end up being as bad as I thought it was going to be. Granted, it still probably is in the long run because 
Obviously, Chester was beating himself up, thinking he was a villain. It's like, you are right. I need to stop putting my work out there. But for Allegra, it's like, right, you inspire so many people, you know. And it's like, once again, you do so much good. I know that that can only, like, translate out, which is not always going to be the case. There will be people who will use that to their advantage. And my immediate thought with how that, that section, how that part of the episode ended, I was almost wondering whether it be Caitlin, but I'm like, Caitlin wouldn't would have to go about it such a roundabout way. she just sneak into his lab to get the info. So whoever's downloading it at the end of the episode, it might be someone in, like, amongst... Because it turns out one of the people, the person behind all this, um, Chester ends up investigating it and turns out it's like, what was it? Wooly lover seven, seven, seven or whatever ended up trying to make like renewable, renewable, like not just energy or like kind of give people like, was it clean water or something with the device, but it would backfire. And it was just like, right, trying to do the right thing, but just things kind of went wrong. It was an accident. So no ill intention. So, but at the end it shows like, oh, but someone else has ill intention. So what's that about? Whether that's a separate thing, which is, like I said, I think that's what Allegra is arguing with the lady from the citizen. I think that's who she, what she was arguing about. Because probably by then, Iris still isn't back. So it kind of falls on Allegra, which is a problem because Allegra and her have beef. Because uh, last episode, she made they made a point to show that she still had issues with Allegra. So I think that's going to come up more. And so Chester's probably going to get in trouble for the fact that it's I mean, it's also the thing of like, he didn't build it himself, but he gave people the idea. So I don't know if you could legally be held responsible for that. Someone taking your research and everything and doing something bad with it. But it's like, yeah, they stole it. It's one thing, but you kind of put it out there for free is a whole other thing. So we'll have to wait and see what that reveal ends up being. That, like I said, that might be a, just a separate thing. I don't know if that has any correspondence with everything else going on. That might be another like just side plot that's happening at the same time. But uh, finally, we also had the situation with um, Caitlyn. And Mark kind of pretty much brings up the same points I brought up. Like, yeah, don't do the whole... It kind of feels like you're going to do the whole Frankenstein's monster thing. It's like, right, you're going to... It turns out she's going to make a new body for Frost. But then he's like, yeah, but what about her soul? And Caitlyn's taking, like, some genetic stuff from, like, who she is and going to use that, but is degrading. So they need to exhume her body to get more. Which Mark is not into this at all. Because he also brings up the good point of, yeah, but what if she doesn't have her soul? That's going to be an issue, you know? Because the soul isn't something you can really recreate. I think it was the perfect confluence of everything coming together. And also the fact is maybe starting being born inside of Caitlyn, being a part of her, and then eventually becoming her own person, you know, I don't know. Like her kind of rebirth might be an issue in its own right. I even love, I didn't even think about this last episode, but Mark brings up, last time you try to resurrect someone from the dead, it was a being from a different dimension tricking you into bringing this life. It's like, yes, Deathstorm was never Ronnie, but obviously, you know, Frost was Frost. But it's like, once again, it's like, who says that you're going to bring her back? It is, a, she, the whole point was to finally let go, but she can't. And even though Mark walks away, even he can't. He admits that, the reason why he walked away was because he was scared because he already lost her. And it's like, right, we're supposed to have a full life together, like you said. But if I lose her again, I'll never be able to pick myself up. So if I'm doing this, promise me it'll work. And Caitlin hesitates for a second, but she's like, it will work. She hopes it works, but there's a chance it won't. So we'll see where things kind of go from there. Uh, someone had hit, uh, said last, I think last episode, they didn't think Caitlin would go through it. I was hoping she wouldn't, but... I think she is, and I, I get the feeling, the inkling, like it's going to have disastrous effects, because Mark did bring it up, it's like, oh, so what are you going to do, tell the rest of Team Flash, and she's like, oh, they won't understand, which I'm like, you're going to say Team Flash, after everything you guys have been through, Barry, who literally went back in time to uh, save his mom life and ended up creating an alternate timeline, you're saying that he wouldn't understand, I guess it's like, right, because Barry and them have had to learn how to let go. You try to prevent things like, once again, they knew future stuff was happening. So they had to try and prevent that from happening. But changing the past is out of the question. You can't go down that route. So I guess for her, it's 
Barry and the rest of the team have kind of found a way just to kind of move forward, take that grief and find a way forward. It's, it's almost sad because, like I said, all the progress everyone made, having uh, Caitlin be able to kind of move forward ended up helping the rest of the team move forward too to honor Frost. But turns out that's n not the case and Caitlin's still holding on. Because she not only lost a sister, who, you know, this is also someone who was a part of her. It's like, right, I have to be able to save you. I, I can do it. Especially because she feels guilty. Uh, which is interesting because I parallels with Barry. The reason why Barry was so adamant about going with Dion and even Joe was like, Dude, don't, shouldn't we slow down? Barry's like, I wasn't, fo if I focused more on Iris's time issue, even when she was saying don't, if I had just done it anyway, maybe we wouldn't even be here where we're right now. So I have to make up for the fact that I wasn't helping her all the time. I need to make up for it now. And I think Caitlin's doing the same thing of I failed to save you. I'm also kind of responsible. Like you wouldn't even be in this position. You wouldn't be dead right now if I hadn't helped Deathstorm. So if I wasn't tricked and I think she's going to blame herself and she's also still going to do what Frost told her not to do to detach herself from everyone else. She's doing that as she's going down her, once again, Frankenstein, mad scientist route, so. It's definitely going to be interesting to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.